Hey everyone out there, we are back again with a new teaching. Today we're going to look at baptism with the Holy Spirit and fire. We're talking about the first coming and the second coming of Christ. And there's so many things I will share today and I am so excited if I can do it. I am outside, there is noise around me, I'm still sitting here in a public place. The birds is all around me and singing is beautiful, it is hot. It is extremely hot here in Mexico right now. It is 37, but it feels like 47. That is, it is 99, but it feels like 116. It is like sitting in a sauna right now. And I hope my computer can do it. I hope uh, my phone is not coming out with that message that is closing down because it is too hot. So I will start and probably you see sweat coming through my shirt as I move on here. And I hope you can hear me because of the birds. Uh, but I plan to do it today and yeah, I don't have any other studio than this. I've been doing a new series since I came out of prison about the gospel. And, and many out there have already heard me fighting for the gospel years. The importance of repentance, not just believing in God, but to repent toward God. Baptism not just as an outward sign of inner faith or symbol, but baptism as it is in the Bible. And also the practice where people got baptized right away when they come to faith. And baptism with the Holy Spirit, not as just something for a few, but something for all of us. And that is the birth of the church and what I spoke of in the last lesson. And there it was important to... And I clear to see, see if you want to see it, that uh, baptism of the Holy Spirit did not happen in, in John 20, 22, but it happened on the day of Pentecost, where they came to celebrate the giving of the law, when they came to celebrate the, the week of feast, the first harvest. That was where it happened, and it could not happen before. So we have the Passover, that is the blood of the Lamb, they were saved out of Egypt, and then we, the law was given on Mount Sinai in Exodus 50 days later. And here we have the cross, and then 50 days later a new law is written on our heart by the Holy Spirit. That was the last teaching. If you haven't seen it, go in and see it. Um, and I did a teaching the other day um, where I spoke about what I'm going to speak about today and Romans 8 and living by the Spirit. Today I'm going to divide it up in two a little. Why? Because um, I, I feel it's better like that. And then otherwise the video will be a two hour video. But I talked the other day about Romans 8 and what happened when we received the Holy Spirit. And that is what I'm going to talk about next time. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. And there I'm going to share many testimonies next time of what it means to be led by the Spirit of God. It's more than, quote unquote, just living holy. It's a life walking by the Spirit, led by the Spirit, living by the Spirit. And these are those who are the children of God. And there, uh, Roman 8 also say here that when we receive the Holy Spirit, the Spirit groan inwardly and eagerly await the adoption of sonship, the redemption of our bodies. And this is what happened when we are filled or received the Holy Spirit. We have received the adoption of sonship or to sonship. But it had not really happened yet. Why? Because we are not home yet. The redemption had not happened. So we have the Holy Spirit in us, but we are waiting for that day. But I'm going to talk more about that in the next lesson. Today I want to start off with it and get you to understand that there is a first and a second coming. And, and there was things Jesus did with the first coming and there's things he's going to do with the second coming. And we are going to look at, at different places in the Bible, in the New Testament, where there is a gap in the text where the first thing that happened was at his second coming but the next line in the first thing that happened was at his first coming but the next line is actually talking about his next coming is pointing to that day when our lord jesus will return 
And the first coming, he actually came to baptize us with the Holy Spirit, but the next coming, he's going to baptize us not with the Holy Spirit, but those who received the first baptism with the Holy Spirit will receive the reward, and those who did not receive the first baptism with the Holy Spirit will there be baptized with fire. And I think it will be very clear when you see this teaching. So let's start. Matthew 3, 11. John said here, I baptize you with water for repentance, but him who comes after me, who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. And, and I know there's a, a lot of people today who teach that, that the Holy Spirit and fire is something we receive when we receive the Holy Spirit. We are baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire there. Or they say, some say that, no, you are baptized with the Holy Spirit, but there is an extra fire baptism that needs to come after you, over you. It's not only that you are received the Holy Spirit or baptized with the Spirit, you also need to be baptized with fire. And I know it's very popular, but let's look at what the scripture say. First thing, what I think is very, very clear in the scripture is that when you receive the Holy Spirit, you have him. The anointing, the Holy Spirit in you. You don't need to jump on a plane and fly to another country to get a man of God to lay hands on you to receive an extra anointing. I came from that background. I came from that setting where I believe I was told that the Holy Spirit is not enough. That is Almost blasphemy, sorry to say it, but the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, is that not enough? Like Jesus, he did not receive the Holy Spirit and fire baptism. He received the Holy Spirit. The Spirit came over him. And from that day on, he started to do miracles. And, and we sounds like today that, no, 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 the Holy Spirit baptism is not enough. You need a fire baptism. You have it. All you need in the Holy Spirit. And I had a time in my life where I was chasing extra anointing and extra people and people to lay hands on me to receive an extra Holy Spirit anointing or fire. But then they, one day I understood what the Bible says that I have it all in Christ. I have the Holy Spirit. I just need to walk by the Spirit. Yeah, I need to keep being full of the Spirit. And how do we do that? How are we being full of the Spirit? From our innermost being, it will run out as living water. Start to obey. Start to do it. Worship Him. Speak in tongues. Worship Him and obey Him. Give and it shall be given to you. Go out and lay hands on people. Give the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Let it flow through you and you'll be full of the Spirit because you are living the life. And, and I am a testimony of this. I see amazing fruit. Not only me, other people around me are seeing amazing fruit. I have so many people, hundreds of people, coming to me and say, Tom, Tom, pray for me, pray for me. I, I need the anointing. Pray for me that I receive the Holy Spirit and, and fire. And I'm like, hey, hey, do you have the Holy Spirit? Have you received the Holy Spirit? Yes, okay, let's go out and do it. Understand what you have received and start to live in it. Yes, I can pray for healing. Yes, I can pray for deliverance. Yes, I can pray a prophesy over you. Like all of that. But there is not an extra anointing. There is not an extra anointing. There is the Holy Spirit. And, and we don't want the fire baptism. Matthew 3 is talking about. You don't pray for that. You don't want that. Because that is talking about judgment. And I don't want you to just take my words on it. Let's look at the Bible. If we go to Book of Acts, and we're going to do a little fast here, just take different places, you don't see one place they receive the Holy Spirit and another place they receive a fire baptism. Or you don't see one place in the Book of Acts that they received the Holy Spirit and fire baptism right away. It was only the Holy Spirit. There is not one place in the New Testament, in the Book of Acts, where you see anyone being baptized with the Holy Spirit. Okay? And when they quote John the Baptist, they did not say that Jesus should baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire. They 
every time said Jesus should baptize with the Holy Spirit, there was no fire mentioned. Why? It will be clear. Let's start in, in Acts 1. Acts 1, we read here, on one occasion while Jesus was eating with them, it was after he died and rose up again, he commanded them to not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift the Father had promised, which you have heard me spoke about. And then he quoted John. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Stop. There's no, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire. No, he said to his disciples that they should wait until they are being baptized with the Holy Spirit. There is no fire. Then he continued in Acts 1 8. But why? And then said, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you shall be my witness in Jerusalem, all Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the earth. There was no baptism with Holy Spirit and fire here. No. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. There is no fire mentioned. What happened in Acts 2? Acts 2, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And verse 2, verse 4, Acts 2, 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit. There was no fire here. They were not all filled with the Holy Spirit and fire. Only Holy Spirit. Yes, if we go to words before, they saw what seems like tongues of fire separated and rest on each of them. So they appeared for them like a tongue, like fire. It looked like fire, uh, is the Axis translation. The Holy Spirit, it looked like fire, but it was not a fire. Not a fire that burns, not a fire that consumes, as we are going to look at. No, it just looked like fire. It's like when Jesus got baptized with the Holy Spirit, we read there in, in Matthew 3.16, that the heaven opened upon him and the Spirit of God descended like a dove. Like a dove. So the Holy Spirit descended like a dove. There appears to them tongues like of fire. The Holy Spirit is not a dove. It was not a dove that came down on Jesus. It was the Holy Spirit that came down on Jesus, like a dove. It was not fire that ascended to the apostles. It was tongues like of fire, the way it was. And it's very important to understand because the fire we read about, John with uh, Jesus with baptized, is, is, is a fire that will burn. It will burn. And Acts 11 also we read here when they talk about the Holy Spirit after the house Cornelius received the Holy Spirit and Peter is in, in front of the elders in Jerusalem. He said there and, and we read, and I remember, Peter said, what the Lord said that John baptized with water but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. There is again no fire. There is no one in the book of Acts, no one in the early church who get baptized with this fire. Thank God for that. Yes, it can feel like fire maybe, you know, we use the picture fire. But fire is something that burns. I had an education as a fireman. In, when I was in the army, I became a fireman. And I've been in, in a container where they are burning and, and the fire is going over us. And I've gone into houses that is burning. And, 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 and that fire is hot. Like, that is hot. That is dangerous. That consumed. That destroy. Yes, we are on fire for Jesus. But it don't mean, like, I'm burning right now. Yes, our faith is being refined as gold is being refined in fire, but, but it don't mean that, that this is that fire we are talking about. So you can use fire in many different ways. I'm on fire for Jesus, and you need to be on fire for Jesus. Come on. And yes, we go through fire, fire trials or trials. and It's okay. That's fine to use those examples. But this is not the fire baptism we are talking about. And, and it's important you understand this. And I think you'll be clear as we go in and read now. Matthew 3, let's read context, context, context. Always read context. Read the verses before, read the verses after. We live a 
copy-paste Christianity where we take verses out of context uh, and we can get it to say everything. Matthew 3, 11. I baptize you with water for repentance, for him who come after me is more powerful than I, whom sandals I'm not worthy to carry. He baptize you with Holy Spirit and fire. But let's read the words before. The axe is already at the root of the tree, and every tree that do not produce good fruit, I will cut down and throw it into fire. So here we talk about a fire in the words before. And that is not a fire that is, um, feels like fire, feels nice. That is, a tree that is not producing good fruit will one day be cut down, and it will be thrown into fire, and it will burn. So the words before talk about fire, then we read Holy Spirit and fire. What about the words after? He have his fork in the hand and he will clean the threshing floor, gathering the wheat into the barn and burning up the chaff with uncrenching fire. So there is a, a, a separation here of the wheat and the chaff. And, and the wheat will come into the barn and the chaff, that is the things that's outside the wheat, will be burned with an uncrenching fire. So this is a fire that is burning. So we have three verses. Fire in one verse, fire in the next, fire in the third. The words before is talking about judgment. The words after talk about judgment. And the words in the middle talk about judgment. It's so clear to understand when we read it in context. Our problem is, is because we have been used to hearing things in a certain way and then we read it with a certain kind of glasses and we don't see what the text really says. The same in John 3. So we have Matthew 3 and John 3, 16. We see here that John, he said, I did baptize you with water, but mightier than I comes him who is not, I'm not worthy to loosen his shoes. He shall baptize you with Holy Spirit and fire. But let's read on. Uh, whose fan is, uh, is in his hand, and uh, he will place the floor. Sorry, the translation I have here is very difficult to read. Uh, I, I got a King James here. And uh, will gather the wheat into, into his barn, and the chief will burn with unquenching fire. The same again. He's talking about gathering the wheat and he's talking about burning the chaff with fire. Fire, fire, fire. So we have Matthew, we have Luke that's talking about fire. But Mark and John don't talk about fire. Mark and John did not say that Jesus will baptize you with Holy Spirit and fire. Mark and John only said that Jesus will baptize you with Holy Spirit. There is no fire in Mark and John. If you read there, I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with Holy Spirit. There is no fire here. Why? Next verse. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth, Galilee, and was baptized by John. There is no fire mentioned. Why? Because it's not talking about judgment in the context. Next, John 1. No fire mentioned again. I saw the Holy Spirit come over him as a dove and remain over him. And I myself did not know him. And the one who sent me to baptize him told me, The man you see the Holy Spirit come over and remain over, he will baptize you with Holy Spirit. There is no fire mentioned. Next verse. I have seen and I testify that this is God's chosen one. The next day John was with his disciples. You know, there is no fire mention. Why? Because there is no judgment mention. So if you take all four Gospels, two is talking about fire, Holy Spirit, and fire, two only say Holy Spirit. Why? Because the two where we talk about Holy Spirit and fire, the fire is judgment. And the two Gospels where we do not have the fire is because they don't talk about judgment. It is very, very clear out of the text that what Jesus is talking about is two different baptisms. The first one is the baptism with the Holy Spirit that came at his first coming. The next one is the baptism of fire that have not happened yet. 
It is very, very clear. And what we often don't understand when we read the Bible is there is a gap in the text. It's, it's a prophecy that is not yet being fulfilled. So, so it should be like that. He, like here, ma, ma, let's, let's say Matthew 12. There's a seven here, Matthew 12, 17. It will be fulfilled what was spoken with the prophet Isaiah. Here is my servant who I have chosen, the one I love, who I delight. I will put my spirit on him, and I will put... And he will proclaim judgment to the nation. So here was a prophecy that was said about Jesus that God, he said, I will put my spirit on him and he will proclaim judgment to the nation. Did God put his Holy Spirit on him? Yes. Did Jesus proclaim judgment to the nation? Not yet. This is like simple. The first part have happened, but the second part have not happened. When Jesus came first time, he did not come to proclaim or give judgment to the nations. Not as we will see it later. Two more scriptures. Hebrew 9.26 is very important. It's talk about 9.28. That Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many. First time he came. And he will appear second time. Not to be bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who await him. So he came a first time to do one thing and second time to do something else. What is that? To bring salvation to those who await him. Yeah, that is not the only thing he's going to do. Matthew 25, 31 said this. That when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne and all the nation will be gathered before him. And he will separate the people from one another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And then we read, then they, the goats, will go away to eternal punishment. Matthew 25. 46, and the righteous to eternal life. So here we, we saw the scripture before, Matthew 12, that I, have, I will put my spirit in him and he will proclaim judgment to the nation. He received the spirit when he came first time and did things first time, but did he proclaim judgment to the nation? No, he will do that second time when he comes. Because there all the nation will gather before him. And what will he do? Those... He will bring salvation to those who receive, have, have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, those who have received him. And they will go away to eternal, you know, they will experience eternal life, but he will also bring judgment and they will go away to eternal punishment. This is so clear. So it has to be understood like this. Jesus came first time to bring salvation. He's coming a second time to judge the world and to bring, give us the salvation to those who await him. Or let's say like this. Jesus came first time to baptize us with the Holy Spirit. And he's coming second time to bring salvation to those who receive the Holy Spirit, the first baptism, and he's going to baptize the rest with the unquenching fire, like we read before in Matthew 3. The wheat and the sharp, chef, the wheat and the chef. So it is two different things we are talking about. And now we have people running around, oh, baptize me with fire. You don't want that fire baptism. Why? Because that fire baptism is judgment. And we don't want that. There is a gap in Matthew 3, Holy Spirit and fire. There is a gap there of 2,000 years, 2,000 years until now, between Holy Spirit and fire, 2,000 years. But that is not the only place in the New Testament where there is a gap, where it's talking about first and second coming. It's actually all over. What happened when Jesus received the Holy Spirit? He was taken out in the desert where he was fasting 40 days by the Holy Spirit, led him out there. And then he went out of the power of the Holy Spirit and he came to Nazareth. He went into the Son of God. Look at this. It's very important in, in Luke 4. 
He went into the synagogue in Nazareth on the Sabbath, as he was accustomed to do. He stood up and read the scroll the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. And he read these words. The Spirit of the Lord has come upon me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind, and to set oppressed free, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Listen here. Luke 4, 20. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it to the people, and sat down. And every eye in the synagogue was on him. Why? What he did was weird. Why? He stopped in the middle of the words. He did not read the words to the end. He stopped suddenly in the middle of everything, in the middle of a line. Proclaimed the year of the Lord's favor, and then he just stopped and sat down. And everyone looked at him, and then he said, This scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. And everyone was amazed. Why was they amazed? Because what happened was very, very special. He stopped in the middle of the words. What do Isaiah 61 says as he read? To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God and to comfort all who mourn, mourns. So we are reading here that came to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And there he stopped. He stopped there. He did not read and the vengeance of the Lord and comfort all who mourns. Why did he leave out the vengeance of the Lord and to comfort all who mourns? The reason he left that part out is because as soon as he read the first part, he said, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. If he had read the whole words, the vengeance of the Lord and comfort to all who mourn, he could not say, Today, this scripture is fulfilled. Why? Because it is not fulfilled yet. The day of vengeance from God has not yet come. And God, Jesus, has not brought comfort to all who mourn. He has not brought, bring, brought salvation to those who await him. And if you read on uh, what that uh, comfort is, six, Isaiah 61, 6 and 7, you can read it all yourself later. He, and you will be called priest of the Lord, you will be named minister of our God. You will feed of the well of nations, and their riches will be yours to boast. Indeed, of your shame you will receive, in, and instead of your shame, you will receive the double portion. Instead of disgrace, you will receive your inheritance. And so you inherit it will be the double portion in your land and everlasting joy will be yours. Hallelujah. One day we will receive this when our Lord Jesus returns. We will receive, instead of disgrace, we will rejoice in our inheritance. And we will receive the land. Everlasting joy will be ours. Instead of being strange of this earth now and go through suffering and persecution for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. One day he will wipe every tear on our eye and he will be our God and we will be his children and we will inherit the new heaven and new earth. Read end of Revelation. But before that there will be a vention of the Lord, the day of the Lord where he will judge the nations. Have that happened yet? No, it haven't. So also in Luke 2 and Luke 4, there is a gap when he read, or Isaiah, when he read, proclaim a day of the Lord's favor, that was the first coming. And the day of vengeance of our Lord and comfort all who mourn, that is the second coming where he will come back in the clouds and divide the sheep from the goats. 
And the reason he stopped was because otherwise he could not say, today this scripture is fulfilling your hearing. The first part was fulfilled, not the second part. One more, Acts 2. We see the same in Acts 2 when Peter stood up and preached his first sermon. So we see the first in Jesus' first sermon, and we, after the Holy Spirit, and we see the first in Peter's first sermon after the Holy Spirit. Peter stood up with the eleven in Acts 2, and there he quoted the prophet Joel, where he said, 2.17. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young men will see vision, and your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servant, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. Have this happened now? Yes, it has. That was the first coming. But then he read, I will show wonders in heaven above and sign on earth, blood and fire and pillar of smoke. The sun will turn to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. That did not happen yet. So when Peter stood up in Acts 2 and quoted Joel, there is a gap. The first thing happened at his first coming, talking about the baptism with the Holy Spirit. The second part is coming at his second coming. There we are talking about the baptism with fire, where the moon will turn to blood and the sun with darkness. And that is the day of the Lord when he comes. And what is interesting here is he's actually quoting Joel wrong. He said here, before the great and glorious day of the Lord. If you go to Joel 2, he did not say that. Joel 2, 31 says this. The sun will turn to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Peter did not say great and dreadful day of the Lord. He said great and glorious day day of the Lord. What is it? Is it going to be a dreadful day or is it going to be a glorious day? It depends. If you receive the first baptism he came with the Holy Spirit, if you are truly born again and are the weed who are bearing good fruit or you are not truly born again and are the chaff where there is no good fruit. It depends if Christ is your Lord and you live with him or not. It depends. For some who awaits his appearing, who have made him themselves ready as the bride that is holy and have a lot of fruit to show our Lord because we have been working toward that day, it is going to be a glorious day. Hallelujah. But for those who are not Prepared. It would be like a thief in the night. It would be a dreadful day. A dreadful day. Why? Because they are not saved. Saved for what? Saved for the wrath to come. This is what we are saved for. Romans 5, 9. Since you have been justified by his blood, how much more shall you be saved from God's wrath through him? First uh, Thessalonica 1 10. To away where we await the Son of from heaven, who was raised from the dead Jesus, who rescued us from the coming wrath. What is that coming wrath? Revelation 6 15. Then the kings of the earth, the princes, the general, the rich, the mighty, and everyone else, both slave and free will hide in the cave and among the rocks in the mountain. They will call on the mountain and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. Jesus came first time as a savior, as a lamb. Next time he will come with wrath as a lion. And the next verse, for the great day and their wrath has come. Who can withstand it? Revelation eleven eighteen. The time have come 
for judging the dead and to rewarding your servant, the prophet, and your people who fear your name, both great and small, and to destroy those who destroy the earth. So there is going to be a judgment. There is going to be a resurrection of the dead. Some to eternal life and some to eternal judgment. It is so, so important we get our eyes on eternity. It's so, so important to understand what salvation is and what we are saved from and what we are saved to. To be honest, the more I look into scripture and what the gospel is, the more concern I have am for the body of Christ. We are preaching, uh, uh, so many churches are preaching a different gospel. And, and when I talk about repentance, I said, why repent? Repent for the kingdom of God has come near. We repent looking forward to that day, the day of the return of our Lord Jesus Christ, and no one preached like that today. Why be baptized in water? Because there we put off the old man that is bound to sin, so we can live the new life, a life, a new life. But it's also where we are baptized into Christ, who is the son of Abraham, so we should be heirs to the promise, the new heaven and new earth, the new Jerusalem we read about here. And so many say that baptism is just a sign, outward symbol, and nothing more. And they don't do what the Bible says, baptize people right away when they come to faith. And then I did the teach about the Holy Spirit last time that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is the birth of the church. And it's for everyone. And those who did not receive that baptism of the Holy Spirit will one day be baptized with fire. There is only those two outcomes. The baptism of the Holy Spirit or the baptism of fire. Because that was what Jesus came to do with everyone. First time it was to baptize people with the Holy Spirit to bring salvation. And there we read in Ephesians 1.14 that that is the deposit guaranteeing our inheritance unto the redemption. So we, we have it in us. That is the engagement ring, ring as I talked about, but the wedding has not happened yet. That is the adoption paper that is signed on now, as I talked about, but it has not happened yet. Or I'm actually going to talk about that next time. So we have received it, but it's the one who holds on to the end who shall be saved. And now we are preparing ourselves, looking forward to the day of our Lord's return, where he will bring salvation to us who received the first baptism. And then he will baptize the rest with the fire with judgment and 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 we need to come back to this we need to come back to the full gospel have you not seen the first season i did about repentance go and see that the second one about baptism go and see that the third one about baptism with the holy spirit go and see that and then the next one i'll do i'll look more of roman 8 where we, we are looking at what it is to walk by the spirit because it's so much more also than what many people have made it we need to have the fear of God in our life. Remember that Jesus said, when the Son of Man return, will he find faith on earth? The deception is all over. It's not just there and there and there. Most of us grow up in deception. When we were grow up, we were told a gospel that was very different than uh, the biblical gospel. Examine the Bible yourself, look into this, see the teaching, take your Bible and, and not just believe my words, but believe what is written here because this is so clear what we read here. God bless you, have an amazing day and please share this teaching with other people. Uh, like it on Facebook, uh, write a Christian comments. Um, by liking it and sharing it, they get more views and it come out to more people and, and it's very important because people need to hear this truth. And then be ready. Make sure you are fully born again. Make sure you 
repent it and live a life in repentance. Make sure you are got baptized with full immersion into Christ after you repent it. Make sure you have received the Holy Spirit and now walk by the Spirit and not by the flesh. And then looking forward to the day of our Lord and then making disciples and spreading to other people. Okay, God bless you and see you next time when I will continue with this teaching. And uh, I am wet now. I am sweaty. I want to go in and change shirt. <laughs> God bless you all. Bye-bye.